Well, in this talk, we're thinking about puberty. And puberty is the development of the secondary sexual characteristics and, and the development of the capacity for reproduction. And here we have the hypothalamus and the base of the brain. This is the pituitary stalk and the pituitary gland below. And the pituitary gland is divided into two. The neurohypophysis at the back, which is the posterior pituitary, and the adenohypophysis at the front, which is the anterior pituitary. And this is the hypothalamus above here. The hypothalamus is quite an amazing area of brain tissue. It's only four cubic centimetres, only 0.3% of brain uh, volume, but it does an amazing amount of uh, things. But what we're thinking about today is that the hypothalamus produces the releasing hormone. And particularly we're thinking about gonadotrophin releasing hormone. So you might remember that there's a portal system that takes blood directly from the pituitary gland directly from the hypothalamus rather, into the pituitary gland. So the releasing hormones are produced by the hypothalamus. They go down this portal system, so they arrive still at fairly high concentrations in undi relatively undiluted blood to the anterior pituitary. And the hormone we're thinking about today is the gonadotrophin releasing hormone gonadotrophin releasing hormone because in the anterior pituitary there's a group of cells called the gonadotrophs and it's the gonadotrophs that produce the gonadotrophin the gonadotrophic hormones so puberty really begins when gonadotrophin releasing hormone goes from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary causes the gonadotrophs in the anterior pituitary to produce the gonadotrophic hormones. And there are two of these that are released into the systemic circulation. There's luteinizing hormone and there's a follicular stimulating hormone. And in girls, of course, these will go to the ovaries to stimulate development of the ovaries. Now, a baby girl is born with many primordial follicles and the arrival of the follicular stimulating hormone in particular will cause the development of these into areas of granulosa cells that surround the ovum. So the ovum is going to be in there and the uh, FSH particularly is going to stimulate the development of these granulosa cells under the influence of follicular stimulating hormone. And the granulosa cells, when they're stimulated by the follicular stimulating hormone, will start producing oestrogen. They will release the oestrogen. And this goes systemically into the blood, circulates around all of the body. And it's this oestrogen which starts stimulating the female secondary sexual characteristics and indeed the primary sexual characteristics. So the oestrogen is going to cause development of the uh, female genitalia, the internal and the external genitalia. So it's going to cause development of the uterus and the cervix. Here's the vagina here. It's going to cause development of these, uh, these structures and the external genitalia. And of course, the oestrogen is going to stimulate the development of the endometrium. Particularly during the first half of a menstrual cycle, the growth of the endometrium is going to be stimulated by oestrogen. And what actually happens is the, um, the luteinizing hormone. This is the, uh, the LH here, the luteinizing hormone. Um, that's going to cause the release of the ovum. That's going to stimulate ovulation. And as well as that, the luteinizing hormone is going to change the uh, granulosa cells into luteal cells. And the luteal cells are also going to produce, uh, secrete progesterone, uh, mostly in the second half of the, the menstrual cycle. 
and that's going to maintain the endometrium for about 14 days before it uh, discharges in menstruation. So really you could define puberty as the time when there is the first, uh, the first menstruation, the first menstrual flow. And this is described as menarche, menarche, the, the time where is the, the first menses, uh, at the end of the first menstrual cycle. And of course this will go on all the way through to the menopause where there is the last menstrual cycle. The first few menstrual cycles uh, after puberty, most of them don't uh, produce uh, ovulation, only about 10% of ovulatory cycles. But the probability of conception would go up significantly after that time. And the oestrogen particularly stimulates the lining of the vagina. Now in the prepubescent girl, the lining of the vagina is a cuboidal epithelium. But the oestrogen causes that to change to a stratified squamous epithelium which is capable of resisting uh, much more trauma because it's many layers, it's stratified. And that allows the possibility of uh, sexual intercourse and uh, potentially uh, childbirth as well because it's a stratified epithelium. So we see that the, uh, the follicular stimulating hormone, the FSH, the FSH is going to stimulate the development of the granular cells and it's also going to cause those granular cells to secrete the oestrogen into the systemic circulation. Now oestrogen is also very uh, anabolic. It uh, causes protein to be built up. So for example, at the end of long bones, we have the epiphyseal growth plates. And oestrogen will stimulate bone metabolism causing bone growth because it's an anabolic steroid type hormone. So initially it will cause growth of the bones, increase mineral mineralization. But then the oestrogen will also cause the sealing the, uh, of the epiphyses, the ossification of the epiphyses or the epiphyseal growth plates. And that prevents further growth from, uh, from, from occurring. Oestrogen is also going to cause uh, breast development. Oestrogen uh, particularly causes the deposition of uh, fatty tissue in the breast. And the progesterone particularly causes formation of the, uh, the ductile system in the breast. So the growth of the breast is partly due to the mammary tissue that produces the milk and the ductile system, but also due to the accumulation of subcutaneous uh, adipose tissue. And oestrogen also stimulates the development of the, uh, the pelvic bones and the hips. So partly the hips widen due to the influence of the oestrogen on the pelvic bones, but also um, oestrogen will lead to the deposition of uh, subcutaneous fatty tissue that makes the, the hips wider, causes the breast to enlarge. Um, and in fact, the, the main reason that women are uh, an overall more rounded shape than men is the deposition of fatty tissue under the influence of oestrogen. And oestrogen will also affect the, the brain as well. So oestrogen is not a single hormone. There's different components to it. And the one that seems to uh, act on the brain to generate female sexual interest, uh, what's called libido, seems mostly to be the estradiol component. So estradiol causes female um, sexual interest. Now other female secondary sexual characteristics of course are the, uh, the, the, the classic development of uh, pubic hair and axillary hair, female distribution of body hair. But these are actually stimulated mostly by androgens from the adrenal cortex that stimulates the growth of pubic hair, axillary hair, also increases the production of uh, sebum from the sebaceous glands, which can lead to acne. And the changes in the sweat glands in the groin and the, the axilla uh, are also largely androgen effects that lead to um, 
early armpits and uh, groins if, if unwashed because it changes the nature of the sweat and the bacteria act on the sweat and that's what produces the, uh, the odours. So we see in female puberty there's development of the primary sexual organs with associated uh, secondary sexual characteristics and the situation is very much the same in men. Now it's the same gonadotrophins that are released it's the luteinizing hormone and the follicular stimulating hormone. So the same hormones are produced in men from the same gonadotrophs stimulated by the same uh, gonadotrophin uh, releasing hormone from the hypothalamus. But of course this time these gonadotrophic hormones are acting on the male gonads. They're gonadotrophic hormones, that's where you would expect them to act. And the male gonads, of course, are the testes. Now, the luteinizing hormone stimulates the interstitial cells in the testis. So it's the luteinizing hormone stimulating interstitial cells in the testis. And that is what causes the testis to produce the main male sex hormone, which is the testosterone. So testosterone is released from the testes into the systemic circulation because the interstitial cells are stimulated by luteinizing hormone. Whereas the follicular stimulating hormone, that will stimulate spermatogenesis. So the FSH in men will stimulate spermatogenesis and the testes will start producing sperm, the male reproductive cells. In fact about a hundred million of these a, a day um, can be produced by the testes. But the testosterone released under the influence of the luteinizing hormone is going to cause development of the primary male genitalia. So there'll be growth of the testes themselves, of the scrotum uh, and of the, of the penis. Development of the primary male sexual organs preparing them for possible reproduction, coinciding with the, uh, the follicular stimulating hormone producing the, the sperm. But testosterone is also a very anabolic protein. So again, we're going to get growth at the epiphyseal growth plates of the long bones particularly, and there's going to be bone growth, bone thickening, increased mineralization. But whereas the estrogen results in closure of the epiphyseal growth plates at a relatively early stage, testosterone doesn't. So the testo testosterone can carry on making the groans, bones grow bigger for quite a long period of time. We'll get increased bone length, thickness and mineralization. And it's only in late puberty that we get the closure of the epiphyseal growth plates with ossification where, where no further growth becomes possible. And of course, testosterone is greatly going to stimulate the associated muscles that are associated with the long bones. So there's going to be a lot of uh, muscular growth. Testosterone stimulating uh, increased muscle mass, increased muscle strength. And we can think of other male secondary sexual characteristics. For example, the testosterone will increase the size of the larynx and increase the thickness and the size of the vocal cords meaning the male voice what we call break the voice breaks it becomes deeper as a result of the increase in the size of the larynx and the increase in the size and thickness of the vocal cords and testosterone also causes male distribution of hair so male distribution of pubic hair auxiliary hair and, and of course in later puberty, it's going to lead to the formation of uh, facial hair as well. It tends to be a later effect, a later puberty effect, caused by the testosterone that men need to start shaving. And it's also testosterone that can cause male baldness. So if there's baldness in men, that's also caused by uh, a testosterone effect. 
So very interesting to note that it's the same luteinizing hormone in FSH that's causing these changes in females and exactly the same gonadotrophic hormones, the LH and the FSH, causing these changes in, in, in males. But some acting via the ovaries uh, in females and acting via the testes in men. Of course, one interesting thing is, um, we said this whole puberty thing is triggered off by the gonadotrophin releasing hormone. Uh, being produced in the hypothalamus. But what actually, what actually causes the um, hypothalamus to start producing gonadotrophin releasing hormone it is less clear. It could be that there's effects from other parts of the brain, there's simply timing effects and it says right it's time for puberty now. But one thing that has been discovered recently is that there are leptin receptors in the hypothalamus. And leptin is released from body fat. From body fat. So the more body fat, the higher the levels of leptin. So that's going to increase the levels of leptin. And uh, that's going to be one way of the hypothalamus knowing that there's more fat in the body. The body is now larger and it's now time for uh, puberty where it's capable of, of reproduction. And it is true that if people are malnourished, uh, puberty and uh, menstruation will, will be delayed in both sexes. So leptin's probably a factor, but there's probably much more to the story. So there we have puberty, all generated by the gonadotrophin-releasing hormone, stimulating the gonadotrophs to produce the gonadotrophic hormones that stimulate the ovaries and the testes that bring about the primary and secondary sexual changes associated with puberty.